Hello again, everybody. This is Steve uh, coming to you with another uh, lesson on writing basics, world building, and things like that. Uh, today's discussion is actually going to be on uh, landscapes, land masses, terrain, and seas. Now you're probably wondering, okay, what is the point of this? Well, in a book, in any story you write, uh, even really on the the, the sci-fi stuff where you're going between planets and stuff uh, technically if you think about it uh, even in a sci-fi when you're going between planets and you're out in space and stuff that's still terrain it's not like terrain on a planet but it's still terrain because you have maps you have destinations you have uh, planets so you know that's kind of uh, terrains and and territory or territory terrains and uh, landscape and stuff but on a galactic level but with you know, if when you're dealing with like fantasy novels, you're going to be dealing with a lot of uh, terrestrial stuff, stuff where you're just at, you know, like if you're in uh, doing a woodland adventure, you're doing a a D and D quest or something similar to D and D. Uh, you got you know elves, dwarves, trolls, uh, random lawyers. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, but uh, actually, I think I actually I think the joke with that is uh, orcs, goblins, and random lawyers or something. I don't know. It's it just kind of a funny that came in my mind but uh anyways when you're uh, dealing with uh you know like fantasy the landscape is going to determine a lot of how your story flows you know do you have mountains do you have flatland do you have uh like here do you have a seascape are you along a shoreline or are the characters along a shoreline uh you know what is the change in altitude because you know when you're when you're land bound, a thousand feet in elevate or change of a thousand feet in elevation is a lot, because uh, you gotta you know you gotta climb that, and if you've ever had to climb uh, two, three, four sets of stairs, you know how exhausting that is. You know that's like it's like stair climber on steroids. Uh, you know you might have somebody that has to climb a cliff. Uh, you know that's all got to be under muscle power. Now you might have things. You know you might have a phoenix. You might have a, a Pegasus or something like that that you can run around in. If it's a sci-fi, you've got a starship. You've got hover boots, a uh, flight pack, stuff that can assist you on that. Now if you've got something to assist you, then those differences in altitude and those obstacles aren't as great. If you don't, now you're dealing with just muscle power. One of the, uh, you know, and one of the things about muscle power is it is not infinite. Um, if you've got somebody with infinite muscle power, you are doing it wrong. Because everybody needs to have a weakness. That's one of the rules. I think I've covered this already, in, at least in small amount. That for every strength that someone has, uh, it needs an offsetting weakness. Uh, especially as that strength gets stronger, the offsetting weakness needs to get more powerful. Uh, like, uh, well, go back to my RPG days, back when uh, when we were doing the old-fashioned uh, uh, MUDs. Uh, MUD was a multi-user dungeon. It was basically it was a uh, text adventure, which it would pop up a little prompt that says, you've just entered a den dungeon and a newt's eyeing you over for dinner. What do you do? Or not a newt, a guru, I should say. You know, a guru is about to have you for dinner. What do you do? Uh, and it would give you options, and you could like, if it didn't give you options, you could just type go forward, uh, open door, explore, things like that. You know, and uh, anyways, in that in that mud, I had a wizard. This wizard's magic power was just off the hook. I mean, this dude was powerful. Problem was, he couldn't aim. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually had, you know, I mean, he could he could cast some just god level epic magic, but he dude just couldn't aim for the life of him. And I had one situation where we had this owl that was sitting in a tree. I don't remember why we had to destroy it, but the idea was we needed to destroy the owl and or at least shoot it down and stop, you know, and uh, prevent it from flying away. So my wizard casts a spell at the owl. Missed the owl, but he hit the tree the owl was standing in. We laughed about that because we got or he got the owl, but he got him through the collateral damage. You know, he uh, the splash damage. He blew up the tree and took out the owl. wasn't what he was after, but that's what he got. Uh, 
So, you know, and the, and the fact that he couldn't aim his spells was the offsetting weakness for that character, which, you know, made for some made for some very comical situations. Like he would aim for a troll and get an, get the orc next to him. Uh, he would, you know, some summon a tree to go beat up on a on a a troll and. It would uproot itself, walk into the road, and then take off, you know, or see the see the troll and go, ah, and run away down the road. You know, just crazy things like that where the spells didn't work the way he intended them to, even though they were, like, really OP. So that's, that's one example. Um, one of the, oh, here's another one. Like, you know, if you guys have seen the, the Sergenius from my Earthly series, one of the offsetting weaknesses of that is that the coaxial drive is vulnerable to certain types of energy so if you shoot a particular type of energy at the coaxial drive it causes the coaxial drive to overload to blows the ship up which is the achilles heel to the ship that is just stupidly overpowered um i haven't given one to the raven and the wolf pack and the mythos class yet only because i haven't needed to uh but eventually they will get a offsetting weakness um well, then there's things like in uh, staying with Earthfleet. Sarah is the strongest of her entire species, the Benoi. The offsetting weakness is that she's not allowed to use it. She has to temper that power at all times, and she can't just go willy-nilly around and throwing her power around and blowing stuff up and doing things like that. She's on a very, very short leash with that power, and if she gets too, if she goes too far beyond the acceptable limits, then the council will go in there and and uh, kind of do a house arrest on her, and then she's got to go stand in front of the council and explain why she was being stupid and using too much of her power. So, offsetting weakness. Um. But anyways, I'm getting off track on this, but uh, it that still plays back into this because, uh. Going back into anime, um, you have like the people who are the devil's fruit users. If they go into the ocean, they lose all their power and their strength. Well, in landscape, you know, you might have somebody that, or when you're dealing with landscapes or terrains or the sea, you might have somebody that can't go near water. Like in Wizard of Oz, the witches couldn't go anywhere near water because it would kill them. Uh, that was an offsetting weakness to all of their power. Um, I'm kind of turning this into an OP versus uh, or an you know, OP control thing here, but y you'll, you'll get where I'm going here in a second. Um, anyways, like uh, when it comes to terrain, like you know, going back to going back to that again, terrain can be defeated with things like you know birds and. Pegasus and Griffins and things that can fly, and you got flight packs, and you got hover boots, and you got things like that. You can, you know, you can overcome those limitations in the terrain. Uh, but you also have to balance that when you're doing it. Like, oh, well, for example, you could have somebody going back to the orcs and stuff. You know, you have your main villain. He's marching an army of orcs towards a castle of humans. Well. Okay, what what is he having to march his forces through? Is it through the mountains? If it's through the mountains, then it's going to be some tired orcs by the time they get to that castle. So you just took an army that was really powerful and basically you kneecapped them by the fact that hey, we got all these you know these highs and lows and we're having to climb hills and go over obstacles and we don't have an easy trail. Uh, or like with the terrain, there's times when say the only navigable path is this little narrow gravel path that's been worn into the ground uh, or maybe somebody has gone and laid down a gravel path so that there is a way to get through this ground because like say you're walking through swampy or, or wet or moist land uh, and all you know and you can't get through there any other way than this gravel path which somebody was you know spent a lot of time and money and everything to build this gravel path through this muddy ground or you know naturally muddy ground and now you're able to uh, walk over rivers. Rivers are great obstacles uh, to advancing armies. Uh, oceans are, shorelines are. Uh, like 
even even in this example here, this pick here, you know, you've like let's just say this is a narrow ocean strait. Uh, you're going to have currents coming through there that are going to mess things up. You're going to need a boat to get to the other side because you guys are not going to swim across there. You know, unless they are just like stupidly good swimmers and that swim isn't going to bother them, you know, they're they're probably going to wear themselves out before they get halfway across and half or all of your army is going to drown, especially if they're carrying a lot of heavy equipment. You know, you get like, say, uh, like the Romans, for example. You throw a centurion in the water and all that dude's going to be is an anchor. You know, the, that that was one of the things that the Romans had when they were doing the, uh, uh, the, I'm trying to remember what they called the Germans back in the day. Um, but they were basically up in the area of Germany, and they were campaigning up there. And they uh, they had a couple of times they were bringing troops by uh, by ship, and storms came up, and the ship and the boat sank, and they they drowned just all these centurions because, like I say, they're wearing you know thirty, forty, fifty, sixty pounds of armor. And I'll tell you this much, you know, your body has a hard enough time keeping your head above water without all of that. You, you're wearing 60 pounds of armor, buddy. You're a, you're a boat anchor. Uh, so, yeah, all of those centurions just drowned because they couldn't get their armor off fast enough. Because that armor was designed to not come off easily. So, you know, by the time you run out of, you know, by the time you're, or by the time you're able to get that armor off, you're too far down to actually make it back to the surface before you run out of air. So, you know, you've got that, you've got that aspect that, uh, like if you're using weather magic, you could, you know, they're coming across in boats and they're wearing all this big heavy armor and they got like suits of armor and stuff and they're weighing 80, 120 pounds. And you stir up a storm and the boat sinks. You, your boat is now full of, of uh, gigantic armored men that are, that are uh, really expensive boat anchors. <laughs> so you just basically took and drowned the entire army. Uh, and terrain is also going to affect different people in different ways like uh, going back to the armored people you're gonna have you know the people with the heavy armor they're gonna be slow I don't care if it's flat ground I don't care if it's hilly ground especially if it's hilly ground they will be uh, your guys that are you know lightly dressed in leather uh, and maybe chain mail they will move a lot faster uh, if they're heavily armored they're gonna move a lot slower uh, the terrain is gonna determine where where they camp uh, terrain is gonna determine where villages are at uh, because you're going to have a, you know, villages are typically going to want to be near uh, sources of water, reliable sources of water. Uh, if they're not, you have the your characters have to dig a well because uh, you can get get past the whole needing to be by a river thing by just digging a well. Uh, as far as terrain is concerned, you got to look at the differences between salt water and fresh water. Uh, you can't drink salt water. Uh, but one thing you can do with salt water is you can either use the sun to dry it out and create salt, or you can do like what the colonists did in uh, early America and you just put it in a great big tin or a, a bowl or pot or something, boil it down and create, uh, you know, just basically. Uh, boil all of the water out of it and you got salt you know that's that's something that will drive your story because in in less developed societies where you don't have you know electricity and refrigerators and ways to keep things cold uh you're going to use salt for a lot of preservation or you can use it a lot for preservation to keep your food fresh especially if you're doing a lot of hunting and fishing you're going to be salting the daylights out of stuff uh then you've got uh let me think here um well you're going to have like uh depending on the location you could have uh root cellars you could have ice houses uh like you're not you know and it, it depends on geography and it depends on the terrain uh you're going to have uh Like in Florida, for example, if your characters are in the 1700s and it's Florida, you're going to be doing a lot of stuff with salt and seawater uh, to create preservation. If you're up north, like in Michigan or Wisconsin or something like that, you're going to have cold winters. You can build an underground ice house. You can build a root cellar. Uh, so that's going to determine a lot of things. Uh, seas and oceans and rivers, uh, that's going to... 
uh, do a lot to determine your uh, your local commerce, your trade, your traveling. Uh, a lot of commerce in the old days was done by river. It was done by sea. Uh, it was done with sailing ships. It was done with rowboats. Uh, so the, you know you got to consider that uh, terrain as far as trees. Uh, your trees and your plant life are going to determine a lot of what do they eat, what do they have for medicine. Uh, what do they have for building materials? Because, like, if you're in the northern climes you, uh, you, or the northern territories, especially north of the 45th parallel, you're going to have a lot of like log cabins and longhouses and things like that. Down in Florida, you're going to tend to have more uh, palm tree thatched roofs and stone walls and things like that because all you got down there is palm trees. Well, you can take the palm trees and you can, you know, you the main walls are either made of palm tree, which really is not a great building material. It can be done, it can be used, but it's not a great building material. It makes an awesome firewood, but uh, it's not a good building material. Uh, but you can like build like mud brick walls, and then uh, use some of that. Uh, some of those palm trees or some of the other vegetation in the area to create the roof structure and then thatch it and stuff like that. So location, um, the climate, you know, is it temperate? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it uh, tundra? Is it jungle? T uh, is it rainforest? etc like that that is going to determine a lot of how your society is going to function what its major strengths and weaknesses are uh, its struggles things like that because you know the landscape and the terrain are a major driving force even though you may not realize it uh, and that goes for both sci-fi and fantasy um, waterways are also a great source of food because you got fish uh, you might have, in some areas, you'll have seal, you'll have whale, uh, you'll have dolphins. And yes, I mean, I know some of you are like, oh, don't touch the dolphins. Well, guess what? Our ancestors ate dolphins. As, you know, as, you know, as much as that might hurt your feelings, our ancestors, if it, if it, you know, walked, crawled, or flew, they ate it. Or excuse me, if, excuse me, if it walked, swam, or, or flew, they ate it. They ate cats. They ate rats. They they ate, literally. I mean, you know, you're talking about survival level stuff. Unless they got to a point where they didn't need some of those things, they literally would eat whatever they could get their hands on. They would eat leaves. You know, it was a matter of just surviving. Um, and you'll you're going to have stories where that's going to be a thing where they're literally going to be walking through a forest and they're going to be foraging. They're going to be shooting birds. They're going to be shooting. You know, small animals, large animals, deer. Uh, they're going to be going out fishing. They're going to eat animals that you wouldn't think were were edible, or that you should eat. You know, it, and you know, to be completely fair, you get into a survival situation, and Fluffy's standing in front of you, and Fluffy's the only thing keeping you from starving. You're going to eat Fluffy. That's all I'm saying. Um. And now, like I said, that that's a hard thing to accept, but that is that's just the nature of the beast, and that's something that you can put into your worlds. That you know there is this struggle that that people are going to have to go through to survive, and survival drives a story. I mean, even in my uh, Offworld Chronicles, when you when you're in the first book, you don't see it as much later on, but it's implied that it's still happening. Uh, early on, you have Simon goes out and he does trapping. He catches and he catches trovets, skins them, guts them, throws them on a sp uh, on a a stick and roasts them. Later on, they come up to a river. They go fishing. They uh, I'm trying to remember when they did it, but they they went and did did some fishing and they ate off the fish. But then they started getting into more civilized civilized areas. So now they're into pastries and bread. Uh, they're into uh, farm raised animals and vegetables and things like that so it depends on you know how desperate are you and how you know what do you need to do to survive and the terrain is going to drive a lot of that so now you, now you kind of see why I went off on that little tangent is it comes back to the terrain uh, areas where animals have a hard time surviving 
you're going to have a hard time surviving. Uh, like up in the high mountains and stuff, there's there's uh, there's stories from the colonists back in 16 and 1700s of areas where even the Indians didn't go up in there. You know, you call them Native Americans or whatever, but you know they didn't even go up, they didn't go up in there because none of the animals went up there because there was just no food. They got, the environment was just so harsh. Uh, you can still survive, but it's by the skin of your teeth and by a whole lot of creative uh, scavenging and hunting and whatnot like that. So, yeah, look, going, out, going out on an adventure in one of your worlds when it comes to terrain is not going to be all roses and kittens. There's going to be a lot, you know, depending on the situation, you might carry enough food, you know, your characters might carry enough food with them to survive the whole trip. And usually that's a good thing. Uh, but sometimes you're going to find that they have to go out and get their hands dirty and get their hands bloody uh, and forage to survive. Like I said, that's what our ancestors did. Uh, you know, the and that that was, just, you know, we consider it barbaric by our standards, but that's what they had to do to survive. And if something happened with modern society and we all, you know, went back to 1600s living, you're going to be out there doing the exact same thing. So... You know, like I say, and I state that not to like drive home a point or or push an agenda or something. I, what I'm trying to get you to do is understand that nature is cruel. Nature's not all you know fluffy buttons and kittens and stuff like that. Nature is uh, nature is cruel. And when you're going across the terrain, you ha you are walking through nature's backyard. You're in that you know you're in nature's. Uh, territory uh, backyard front yard whatever you want to say you know out there you're you're uh, not the you're not the top dog in the food chain you're part you're part of the food chain which means you can either eat something or something can eat you uh, and that's something like I say again that you have to think about when you're talking about your uh, your terrain uh, when you're dealing with mountains you're dealing with various pieces of landscape uh, land, another thing that the that our ancestors had to deal with, which your characters will probably have to deal with, is if you're hiking across land, uh, land has a nasty habit of breaking limbs. <laughs> uh, you know, like f people falling off cliffs, cliffs and dying, uh, things falling on them, animals attacking them and killing them. Uh, there's stories from uh, the late 1700s, early 1800s, people going out west and and doing some exploring, and grizzly bear would pop out of nowhere and eat the expeditionary team or kill them all off or tear them up you know they might they might get away from the bear but you know somebody got their skull torn off or their you know their scalp torn off or whatever like that one guy got his entire jaw removed uh by a grizzly bear to do, that 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 bear jack slapped him in the next week real bad took his whole jaw right off and everything uh wasn't daniel boone it was uh can't remember it was one of the guys kind of in his his sphere of influence that was that went out west and Dude got jumped by a grizzly bear, and the grizzly bear literally took his scalp and peeled it back. Uh, you know, and like I said, that's just the you know that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, you look at Alaska people, and they talk about you know having to deal with lynx and wolf and bobcat and and grizzly bear and black bear and all these other things. And then you get out on the water, and the water's got predators in it. You got to be careful of uh, like killer whales and and things like that. So, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, well, uh, I, th I don't remember if I mentioned it or not. Well, I know I mentioned it under weather, but I think it would be applicable here. Is terrain is also going to affect the migration of animals. Uh, that that includes birds. That includes uh, four-footed beasts, uh, and that's going to affect your story because those animals are moving through your territory. And it's well, really, technically, you're moving through their territory, uh, and you know their your characters are going to run into uh, migrating herds, uh, like the the Plains Indians. They uh, Plains Indians would were literally a migratory uh, people because they had to follow the buffalo wherever the buffalo went, and the buffalo moved around as the food supply dictated. Uh, so you know you got. The landscape is going to determine the, the amount of available food, and the amount of available food is going to determine where animals go. Uh, animals are going to move about based on weather, for shelter, as well the individuals. 
And like I say, nature has a bad habit of trying to kill you everywhere you go. Uh, you know, you can trip, you can fall, catch your leg in something, break your leg, uh, have something fall on you. Uh, all kinds of fun things. Uh, there's stories of guys who went out for a nature walk and got a trout dropped on their head or got a, 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 a sturgeon or something dropped on their head because they had an eagle was flying overhead and lost their, lost their lunch, literally. Not like barfed it up, but they were carrying their lunch in their claws and the animal you know trying to trying to rescue itself and the eagle lost uh you know the eagle dropped it and it dropped right on the guy's head darn near broke his neck uh or like you've got the uh asian carp i think it is you go down the river on you go down the river in a boat and you and you scare the asian carp they'll literally jump up there and smack you in the face with their tail uh <laughs> the guys have gotten broken jaws and broken skulls and and stuff like that from those things. So that that's something else you got to consider with your landscape. Just you know, you might have fish like the Asian carp. Uh, what's another one? Oh. Yeah, landscape also affects weather. Uh, mountains are really great for creating uh, rainforests on one side and deserts on the other. Because you know that when the air comes in, it goes up the mountain, cool, or goes up the mountainside, cools off. It rains, the water goes down the mountain, goes back out to the sea. But by the time that air gets over top of the mountain, it's all dried out. So everything on the other side is a desert. So you know, land, the landscape and the terrain is going to affect the weather, and the weather is going to affect the landscape and the terrain. Uh, you know, if you have high, like I say, if you have high mountains, you're going to have a rainforest on one side and a desert on the other. Um, you could have high snowy peaks that are snow covered even in summer. Like Hawaii, you wouldn't think about this. Like everyone, when you think of Hawaii, you're thinking year round summer. Mm -mm. They have blizzards in the middle of summer up in the mountain tops of Hawaii. I kid you not. In Hawaii, like in the winter, what little winter they have. You can go to the beach in 80 degree temperatures during the day or in the morning, and in the afternoon, you can go up to the mountaintops and go skiing in the middle of summer. And it's all because of the terrain and the elevations and stuff. So, um, anyways, uh, I think that's everything I've, I've got for this one. But, yeah, anyways, those are, those are all things you've got to consider when it comes to your books. Uh, Yeah, terrain terrain dictates also where cities go, where roads go, where uh, various infrastructure goes, how it goes there. Uh, that's something else to think about. But beyond that, I think that's all of it. If you guys have any questions, thoughts, comments, concerns, uh, you know, feel free to ask, and I'll be happy to answer them or give you advice on how to how to deal with it and things like that. Just you know, taking from my own experience. So. Anyways, catch you guys later and see you in the next video.